Today's podcast is first, debuts, goals, agents. Uh, Sid has an unbelievable story about hitchhikers. Uh, and Jermaine Defoe confirms whether he's won the lottery or not. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast uh, with me, Peter Crouch. Got the Notorious SID with me and uh, and Chris Stark. Uh, everyone okay? Really good. Yeah? Yeah. Really yeah. good. Well, I had a good weekend. Great. Um, fighting fit. Yeah. January. Been good. Been healthy. Yeah. Also had a few drinks. So it was a nice blend. Oh, was, oh, was, was there any New Year's resolutions for you, Sid? So, or not? Uh, I mean, I... It was to go a little bit healthy. I'm not going to lie. I oh, got a little Pirelli tire that just, you know, you know, inflated up around two here. puddings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt like I was seven months pregnant. Yeah, really, yeah. I just had that little that bold. So yeah, I was just you know being good, and you know I've got a nice little balance at the moment. So. All right. Oh, here's Cheers. to you. Sid. <laughs> I mean, that's lovely to hear. Yeah. <laughs> to Sid's health, everyone. Healthy Sid's. Healthy Sid's is a happy Sid's. So, no, that's that's good. Um, obviously, we're now in this new setting. We're in this pub that you so mm. wonderfully have created, Pete. Uh, there's been a few suggestions for names for it <laughs> as well. Some good ones? Some good ones. I don't know if we want to choose one of these today or if we want to oh. rumble it on a little bit, but thank you so much to everyone that has sent suggestions. Obviously, if you're just listening to this and you're not aware of this, we've got this new kind of pub that we're in now, um, but it's made from scratch, so we can name it, we can do whatever we want with it. It's our rules, really. Um, so first thing, the most important thing, I think, is to get a decent name. How about this? Sadly, I haven't got the name of the person who sent this one in, the Lanky Arms. <laughs> Fantastic. It's true. It's so good. It's true. Yeah. It's very, yeah. very, I like it a lot. Uh, this one was from Thomas on Instagram. I saw, I really liked it. The three buggers. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. But you've got to say it in the Aussie accent as uh, well. The three buggers. <laughs> It's quite. I think it's nice because it. You're right. It lends itself to a bit more of a walkabout vibe, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, bit, yeah, bit more yeah, yeah. Okay, little Aussie bar. Yeah. Um, and I saw this one from Connor on TikTok. I really like it. It's just the put in. Oh, the put in, which wow. works, nice. which is quite good. Yeah. So I think if anyone can challenge that, let us know. Peter.crouch at acast.com or Instagram, TikTok. Get into the comments there. And I think put we should in. settle them. I think you've got to choose one sometime soon, Crouch. They're good. They, they are, are good. The put <laughs> in. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Very good. All, all three of them are very good. I like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. very good. Well, that, that can rumble on then. Mm. Um, question for you, boys. Uh, and I guess especially you, Pete, I was listening to Andy Goldstein in the week or it popped up on social. I don't know if it was an old clip, but it was him talking about Jermaine Defoe and a rumour that he won £7 million on the lottery. <laughs> Mate, I heard this rumour. <laughs> what, recently? Yeah. Is, you not heard this rumour go around? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did hear it. Is this true? Yeah, so there's... Because I remember I got I got him I got him on. Um, I was interviewing him for something. It wasn't even this podcast. I remember what it was. And I did ask him, but like I quite like the the rumor. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It, it's well, I saw the clip. There was the annoying thing in a way about the clip is Andy Goldstein was discussing it with Darren Bent, and Darren Bent's point was footballers don't really talk about money. And he, Andy was right, in my opinion, going like, yeah, but if he's won £7 million on the lottery, he's probably mentioning, right? No, but did you no, know? If, I if, if, I, if, someone, if, I mentioned, if I won £7 mil, right, I think it'd be like, I think you'd get a lot of hate. It'd be like, oh, but you've done so, you know, you've done well in yeah. life and I think you'd get a bit of grief. But if you kept it quiet <laughs> and just went about your business and, and just like, you know, bought kind of nice things that you might have had anyway... Yeah, you could probably get away you with could it. Definitely get away. But with you don't it, think yeah. you'd know if right? Just so let's say what a player you play with okay. turns up at the training ground and they've won seven million on the lottery. No, you wouldn't, wouldn't tell. Like if if any one of us turned up at work or if anyone turned up in their office and had won seven million on the lottery, you probably would know, right? Yeah, but if to make the thing is, if you rolled up here like in a Rolls Royce, I'd I'd go. What's happened with Chris here? <laughs> yeah. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if Jermaine Defoe pulled up, yeah. you'd go. Well, we did have a football career for, yeah. for ages. Do you know what I mean? You, they you can hide it a lot. Do you know more. what I mean? You would have. Yeah. So I just, the thing is with Jermaine Defoe. Are you saying like, a seven million pounds to Jermaine Defoe is like throwing a sausage down a hallway? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. No, because it would change. I think it would change his life, especially after football. Yeah. But I think you, you wouldn't necessarily. 
like he smell could, a rat. He could hide it. Yeah, he could, yeah. He, he could hide it a lot more yeah. than. If he was on a nice average. holiday, you go, you know, and he was flying in business, or I don't know, he was you know, whatever, he was doing things that Jermaine Defoe would kind of have done. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't be. So that's what Darren Ben was saying is that the money side of things, you wouldn't necessarily notice because it's Jermaine Defoe. It wouldn't be unusual if yeah. you turned yeah. up in a car. Yeah. So my question to you is, do you think he's won £7 million in the lottery, in your opinion? And secondly, can we can we get this solved once and for all today? Can you just drop him a text? <sighs> I'll just I know footballers text, yeah. don't yeah. talk about money, but... I think if someone won it during their career, I mean, everyone's different. I wouldn't say I'd, 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 I'd won it. I wouldn't go to the dressing room and go, lads, I've won £7 million. <laughs> you can't believe it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it either. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Are you tempted to call him or is it a text, gonna, do you think? Uh, I'm gonna, shall I just text him or shall I just call him? I think the call would be amazing. Uh, what about a voice note? Yeah. 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 Uh, Jay's crowd sheet. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not, I'm doing the podcast again. Um, I know you've been wrote since this numerous occasions. Um, have you won the lottery and have you won seven million? Quick answer on a voice note would be great. Love you. <laughs> great. <laughs> Strange rumor, isn't it? Have you? Won, I've just literally it, have you won seven million? The library even said hello. <laughs> <laughs> I love the love you at the end as well. But what if he has? So, and he's kept this a secret all his life, right? And he hasn't. But what's if, he it's, come if, back it's, if it's a no, is that the best rumor? In current circles, doing the rounds with footballers, How and maybe there's something even started. In. It's got make, there can't be smoke without fire. But that's what I'm saying. What a bizarre thing to start. And maybe he can help elaborate. But we should do... This feels dangerous as well, an episode on rumours. Yeah. And just settle them. You mm. know, phone... Mm. We can do... We can, we've got a great team of people here. What we could do team, is yeah. go like, the rumour is this person dot, dot, dot. Mm. And then if you boys haven't got a direct contact, one of us will be able to get to someone who knows yeah. them, right? And we'll settle them yeah. throughout the episode. Boys, uh, great news as well. Gladiators is back. Oh, yeah. How good cool. is that? Good. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, exactly the same. It's brilliant. Same theme tune. Same theme tune. Um, we've got... Uh, who's the ref? It's... Well, it's Mark not, not it? the same referee, but it's no. Mark Clattenburg. Mark Clattenburg. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. But it says exactly the same words. Yeah. In, strange enough, a Scottish accent. He, he sort of borders into... That's what I think. Is it the same, do you? Yeah. It was yeah. a little bit, yeah. And he says the exact... Oh, you'd think they'd just change. Yeah, like, no, you know, it's so nostalgic. It's hard. Yeah, like, people right. won't like it if you change too much. So he That's, goes, have Gladiators. You seen, have you seen it? Yeah, he doesn't say it. He loves <laughs> shouting it, doesn't he? Yeah. Gladiator! Does he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On my first whistle and all that. Does he do That's all that? That's all he does. There's no... If you think about it, like, you can... There's so many rules in football, right? Gladiators is absolute piss for him. You don't need a referee. There's three of them, I think. Mm. There's three referees. He's got assistants with yeah. him and everything. Don't, I'm not totally sure what they do. So they run, run the me, line or like, that. They do. They sort of stand on the side of the gauntlet and things like that. And do you think that's actually his team, like, from... Or do you was, think when he got offered the job, he's like... He's like, yeah, but I don't go without my team. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if they, oh, there's got to be a celebrity one coming up. You're up they, for it, aren't you? Uh, well, would, would you, you would do you, it? I don't know. I'd, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, I'd do it. <laughs> I do know. you know who I think should do it? Wayne Bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, he's like, oh, imagine him against the gladiators. End, end the show. End it. Do you reckon? End the show. I mean, one. there's something in this if we could if we could sort Wayne, that is a great one, Wayne Bridge into gladiators. That could be phenomenal. Is, yeah, yeah. We say, say, can you sort it? I do know the, the, the person that Produces well, it. Text him. Oh. Now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> voice noting right now. Let's get the voice <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's get it away. Let's let's get let's get business done today, crowd. Oh, Jeez, just get shit is done. there a celebrity gladiators pending? Would you just voice note him as well? Yeah. You you go, go, you're going for the producer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Straight <laughs> Great, to the I top. love him. <laughs> well I'm This Pete. is how we roll. Yeah, yeah. Dan, just recording the podcast. Um Wayne Bridge. Celebrity gladiators needs to happen. Get back to me ASAP. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just get shit done, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Let's just show me. Just you say it, we'll yeah. make it fucking happen. That's you what actually, we today is. You actually so said like an agent <laughs> as well, didn't you? Let's make it happen. Let's get this shit done. Today is get, get shit to done. Me. Let's do it throughout this episode. Brilliant. We'll get shit done. Okay. Uh, just talk on the talk of getting shit done. Mm. Sean Murphy, bullshit. Yes or no? 
oh, what was this? Because I saw you pile into the WhatsApp What's group it, stuff What is so mad is that we discussed, you brought it up, mm-hmm. hole in one, one, four, seven, nine, da. We discussed that randomly on the last podcast and then all of a sudden it feels like it's blown up everywhere. Like people are discussing it and Sean Murphy's come out and said, I have done them all. So this is the, <laughs> this is the snooker player, Sean Murphy. Yeah. 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 Well, he's done at least, wait, so he's done the one, four, seven. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, he's Obviously. a professional snooker player. But what I think that what because no one who's not a professional snooker player could do that one four seven, I don't think. But I do think you can do a nine data if you're not professional. And I also think you can do a hole in one if you're, you're not joking me. There'll be good amateurs who can do a one four seven. Must be. Yeah, but I think I I think we've established that the one four seven is the hardest. I think. Yes. Sean, whether you think it's bullshit or not, has said that the dartboard doesn't move. The darts don't, do you know what I mean? Nothing, whereas there's so many variables in a yeah. snooker table. Just on that one quickly, are we saying that every pro snooker player has had a 147? Yeah. Must have. Surely. How? how, how? No, I don't know. No? Yeah. Serious? Well, yeah, well, yeah in practice. How adequate not, you'd feel. Yeah, but not, not, in, a, not in a... Every like golfer's a had a hole, every pro golfer's had a hole in one. Well, I reckon there's people out there that haven't. No, but every pro golfer. Oh, I'd like to think, yeah, because some pro no, golfers, some people have 20. Or like, no, I'm saying any... Just, oh, we're saying a hole in, in one could be in any... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I'll well, say what, so. What yeah. is no, the I would say so. Yeah. No, but probably. They've hit enough golf balls. Yeah, because Sean Murphy's yeah. not going to be... No one's going to be able to do all three on the world stage. No. Do you see what I mean? Because yes. they're going to be experts in one sport. So you have to allow, even if... I think it's just got to be in any scenario... I think talking reasonably, we're, we're talking about a hole in one from a decent distance, though. You know, we can't just yeah. go down to yeah, top, top golf. Sid's and, that one. A real one. Yeah. He's Where? got on my, our local golf yeah. club, we're, we're members of. Yeah. He's got his name on the bench. So if you get a hole in one, your name goes on the bench. I mean, I don't like to talk about it, but if you're yeah. willing to go into yeah. it, I'm more than happy to. His, his name right. is on the bench. But what I love about that is in a hundred years' time, when we're all not here anymore, yeah, yeah. Steve Sidwell will be on, the, on that bench. But you'll get a bench as well. Your name will be on a bench. But you just like it for sporting reasons rather than just uh, people sitting on you and, you know, like where you, you're younger and you get off with someone in the local park kind of thing. Yeah. And you can, on your bench. On my bench. You know? <laughs> my dog's got a bench in Pittsburgh Park. When he, when he died, we got him a bench. Seriously? Still so, there? Yeah, still there, yeah. So if you want to go, if I, anyone who's I, I been to Pittsburgh Park. I don't want to do that down. But well, that, that a bit of a that's, weird thing to get a dog, isn't it? Well, he like he loved that little part. He loved. But he that would part. never sit on a bench, would he? No, but we would sit there and think <laughs> and look at him run. <laughs> I didn't do it. My dad did it. No, it's, I'm not saying sorry, mate. Like, no, it's really it's sad quite, news. It's quite upsetting for me. Do you know what I mean? No, I, like, I get. You, <laughs> get that. It's just <laughs> you're going to get, get pelters for this. <laughs> Why? No, I'm coming saying, for my dead dog. No, I'm not coming for the dog. <laughs> Pete, I'm saying that's really he's sad. He's literally coming for my no, dead I'm, dog. No, I'm actually not. <laughs> he's changed really the tone sorry. of his voice and everything. Now. I'm really sorry for your loss. What I'm, I'm saying sorry is, for your loss. No, but what I'm saying is, what? why the... Like, I get it with a bench because it's... If someone's passed away, it's a bit like, oh, they used to love coming to this park and mm. they'd sit here mm. and they'd watch the pond or mm. whatever. But, but, but the dog... To- I don't know. Like, I used to like the river as well. What do you want me to like call the river like Buster? <laughs> That's what I mean. Like it just <laughs> I can't the only thing I could do, I mean It's like, a bit like if I died and you got me a kennel. Do you know what I mean? I've never used a kennel. Yeah. Right? yeah. Do you get what I mean? But the thing is it was it was in his place of enjoyment. Yeah. It, yeah there's a there's yeah, something in there that yeah. we can enjoy as humans and think no, of I it while that. we sit. I get that. Um, Steve, just on your um, hole in one. I was glad we were going to get back onto that one. <laughs> what I'm going to do here is just make a list of what we've all achieved on this. Okay. Because if we're actually going to go and try and compete it. Why are you drawing like a big, like, long line as if so, we're going to. What have you got? A hole in one? No. One, four, seven? No. Nine darts? No. So, none, none, no. I'm the same as you, Pete. Now, what have you got, Steve? I've, I've got a hole in one. You've got a hole in one? Yeah. Tick. Yeah. Nine uh, dart. Not yet. And um, no, one four seven. Not. No. So out of the three of us from the graph that I've made here, <laughs> Steve probably stands the best chance of competing for the other two. Yeah, yeah. Well, I honestly think I can. I no, I'm not even gonna say it. You think you can do it for nine dollar? <laughs> no. Nah. What are no, you gonna say? Then? With practice, I reckon I could. Yeah. 
Do you I, think I, you could do it before Christmas? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but that's that's massive. So by Christmas, I've got a dartboard. I'm gonna get my dartboard up now. I'm gonna get it up. I wanna okay. go for it. But what the thing is with it, we'd have to we'd have to work out a way that we could constantly film it. Yeah, Do you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. There's there's because yeah. there is an element, a huge element of trust. I think one four seven is out of the question. Do you think? Oh yeah, come on. I think it's I think it's off the table. Yeah. The Sean Murphy argument though is if if we're saying that's the toughest one, it's conceivable that he could throw nine data and do a hole in one. Like he's done the hard I think part it's, almost. Uh, yeah. I do, exactly. I do agree with that. Yeah. So if maybe, anyone's got a chance doing it, it's a snooker player. So do we need maybe someone to get in touch? Unless you know someone, Pete, that we can voice note now, who's done a one four seven, but is willing to spend good time doing the other two on behalf of the podcast. Because the other idea we could do is there might be someone listening who's, um, you know, needs a bit of sort of weekend work, that kind of thing. Maybe we could just pay them a modest hourly rate to attempt this on behalf of the podcast and prove if it can happen or not. I'm sure there'd be a lot of takers. It's a good idea, yeah. It's not the worst idea, no, is it? It's, not, no. it's, it's quite a fun So what job. you're saying to me, is there, any, is there anyone out there who has a 147? Yeah, and then is willing at our expense to go for the nine data and the hole in one just to prove and maybe be the first person to have actually done it other than Sean Murphy. You're going to get a lot of takers on that. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Well, there's a lot of people going, I can do that. I know, that's why I just thought, I'm and just, a lot of people actually do a nice shot. <laughs> All right, then, lads, let's crack on with the pod. Uh, we talk about firsts today. Mm. Um, yeah. How did you lose your virginity? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, no, it was not that. It's not that. <laughs> oh. I thought I was going to come to a little bit later on. Yeah, He's no. a sin fan. Um, yeah, like I was thinking debuts, first goals, mm. first injury, first, you know. But like, there's a lot of things in football where, you know, it's your, for your first time, it's, it's kind of a, it's a huge breakthrough and it's, you know, I remember when I when I when I played my first professional game, I was like, "Oh, you know, where does it go from here? Or is, is this it? You don't know, do you?" Yeah, it's, it's just so exciting. And we've talked to about quite a few of those stories, even like your first flat, the inflatable furniture, all of that kind of <laughs> that stuff, like the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the figuring <laughs> out. We haven't dug down uh, with you on that, Sids. Really, oh. what was what, talk us through some of the that those moments where you really. It, it sort of crept in. The money started coming in a bit. You, there was, you know, the professionalism, but you're yeah. still young. <clears throat> yeah. So it's like a kid with money situation. First well, flat, first car. Let's, go, let's, let's start with like first contract and first game. Professional yeah. game. First, first professional contract, first professional game. Okay, so first professional contract was at Arsenal. Uh, I was 18 and I signed... I remember going to Victor London, Victoria. So a few of the boys went with their agents and I was like, no, I'm not going to go with my agent. I'm just going to go in on my own because I was only 18. And uh, Liam Brady sat down and he was like, right, I'm going to give you 750 quid a week and uh, you've done really well over the last couple of years so we're going to give you a £20,000 um, sign-on bonus. Well, wow, better than my one. £10,000 for each for, the, for a two-year deal. Um, and that was it. I think it was 750 for the first year, 950 for the second year. And that was it. I was like, all right, perfect. Good. When you're Arsenal, were you still living with your mum and dad? Yeah. So yeah. your first house was Reading when you moved to Reading? First house was Reading, yeah. I was still, when I was a pro at Arsenal, I was still, basically still getting a train. Yeah. Because it was easier old. to get to London Colney rather than driving around the M25. But you were, you were at your, your family home? Yeah, I was at mum and dad's house. Yeah, I was, I, even there, I was yeah. at QPR, um, in the first team, I was still at mum and dad's because it was so local. It was only when I went to Portsmouth that I, I kind of moved yeah. out. I didn't have no reason to move. I mean, I'd been with my wife now since we've been at school. So we've been going out since we was 13. Mm. So, and then when I moved to Reading, uh, we bought a little three bed um, semi detached. It was nice. Where was that? In Reading? Or? In Reading, yeah. 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 I, I was originally driving around, car sharing, me, Nicky Forster, uh, John Solarco, and Steve Brown, <laughs> three older <laughs> pros. We all chipped in and we bought a Ford Mondeo. <laughs> Great. Here we go. And, uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be a Ford Mondeo. We chipped in Great. and we all bought a Ford Mondeo. And, what do you uh, mean all bought it? So, you so you're, in, you're, you've you all it. got enough money where you could each So we have all lived a car. around the same area. I know, but I've never heard of a group of friends buying one car. Mm, no, that's we, happened in, a yeah, lot. Yeah, well, we've done that, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. We've done that yeah. at, uh, at Stoke. Mm. Um, 
I yeah. don't know why I never thought of doing that with my mates. That yeah, feels kind of genius. Well, especially if you're all going to the same place. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was a youngster at the time, so I was like 19, 20, and these were three senior old pros. And I, I just kind of followed suit, and uh, we'd, some journeys were crazy. We'd pick up hitchhikers. Just for the <laughs> What? Have you actually picked up a hitchhiker? <laughs> Have you? Or bought them to train them? <laughs> Can you imagine being a hitchhiker, right? And you're getting in the car. We've got Steve Sidwell, Nicky Shaw, and John Salako. <laughs> yeah, we used to be, yeah, just for the crack. We used to, you used to see them on the side of the, like the M4. But were you searching for them? Was it like you'd go no, out of a day? we just see one. We'd just go, should we just stick him in the bag? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> was, there, was there one particular moment where you, you had a chat with this fella? Like, yeah. What, uh, what, yeah. what was he like? What was he like? <laughs> what was his vibe? The, the majority of them were. <laughs> what do you mean, majority? No, 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 because <laughs> <laughs> the majority of them, he's a serial hitchhiker traveler. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm sweating. No. no, so the majority of of them, you know the ones that deliver cars? You know the people that uh, deliver? Yeah, yeah, so they deliver them. They deliver them. They, they, they haven't got one. They, yeah, yeah. To so, get back. Yeah, so basically they're paid on delivery, so they deliver the car and then it's, they, they can pay the, like their train fare to get back but that eats into their um, earnings. So they try and hitchhike back. Do they? Yeah, have you I've seen never them? even heard of this. I didn't know that either. Did you not? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, it right. makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. But I just... So normally people think hitchhikers are like, you know, homeless stragglers just trying to get from A to B, which is a, <laughs> a, lot, a lot are. <laughs> I just didn't know this pod was going to go... <laughs> Down this route. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, we used to pick up a, a, a variety of hitchhikers. Wow. Um, any any standout? <laughs> well, there was one. I remember one. There was uh, there was uh, I think his name was Clive. This fella. <laughs> he had a beard, and he just wanted to get from A to B. The he, majority of them had beards. Well, what was his like, story? Was like, so he was what? Just thumb up on the motorway. Was yeah, he? he just had he like had a sign. Yeah. So we obviously trained at Reading, and we was driving back towards Surrey. So we'd go sort of M4 or M3. So it was the M4, M4. you were sort of... That was the uh, corridor, if you want to hear your car. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd all finish training, right? Get into a car and then part of the fun was who can we pick wow. up on the way back towards but Surrey? what was Clive like? What was his, what was his story? Clive just... Uh, oh. He just, he just, uh, he wasn't a car delivery man. No. He just had it rough. <laughs> yeah, that's really, he had a tough yeah. life. He just wanted to get somewhere. He just then. wanted to get back towards London. Yeah, uh. I think he was at Bristol and he had to get back to see someone. So we picked him up and Where I was Do you remember in, where he dropped you off? Like, we just dropped him off on a, a hard shoulder like yeah. on the M25 because we obviously were yeah, going around. you done your round. bit. That's the yeah. game, isn't that's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He needs he's got to go again. Yeah, yeah. He's got to go and again. Then, <laughs> I don't know. Cardiff players on the next bit of it coming yeah, back yeah, towards. Yeah, yeah. I, I like know we never realised who he was. So it wasn't as if he's got in the kind of gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they, they just didn't know. But Get it as wow. like a one-off. It, it's the quantity. Scientist, that's a bit odd. So you'd assume personas occasionally. You'd you'd yeah, go like, what should we be today? You could imagine it was just a bit of a boring ride. Yeah, you know, yeah, every yeah. day. So it was just how uh, can we just entertain ourselves? Mm. And we'd we'd pick up a few, you know, mm. stragglers. You got to get entertain yourself somehow, haven't you? And pitch, picking hitchhikers yeah. up is is one of those. That's one of them. It was it was all safe. It was all above board. We was of you course know, you're, you're helping seatbelt. them on their way, you know. Yeah. And as you say, your yeah, seatbelts on and all yeah. of that. Yeah, I'm well, sure no, you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just standard that. Yeah. Um, but so you all shared a car, and um, and then who kind of where where did it live? Where did well, this car? Uh, we had some. Uh, I think Br uh, Steve Brown used to take it home because he lived the furthest. Steve Brown was the centre half. Yeah, for yeah, Charlton. I, I played with him. Yeah, good lad, Brownie. Yeah, he was good. Portsmouth. So there was Nicky Forster, Steve Brown, myself. Did you name the car? No, I didn't have a name for a car. It was, it was, a sh it was, it got, it turned into a shit heap, really. Yeah. You have to clean it out. Um, <laughs> there'd be all sorts in there. Uh, so Brownie would drive it to his normally. And then, yeah, we was just, uh, take turns driving. We'd, you know, we'd get out, we'd, whoever was driving normally, would you get the petrol? And, you know, if you go in, go, boys, you want anything? Oh, yeah, get me this, can I have a coffee? Can I have this? Someone would say, oh, would you get me anything? That was a green light to get him anything. So you'd just come out with a windscreen wiper. And you just, <laughs> Give him that. <laughs> How did the process go of the first 
transfer? Like, did you have an agent? So you're at Arsenal, right? Yeah, so... But, but like, how did you go to Reading? How so it was a bit up? of a strange one. So I was on loan at Brighton, and then we played... When I was alone at Brighton in the Championship, we played Reading in December, or November, December. And then the January window opened, and then Reading put a bid in to Arsenal, which Arsenal accepted. And then I had to go, and I was like, they said, I got the call, and they was like, listen, we've accepted a bid from Reading. So I went back to Arsenal, spoke to Arsene Wenger and Pat Rice, and just said, what's the story? And they said, look, we've accepted a bid. If you want to stay, we can offer you a new, new terms on a new contract, but we would advise you to go out and continue your career and go down a, a step to, to come back up. And this was a mad Arsenal team at the time. Well, I was, yeah, saying, I mean, it was it impossible was, to break in the first team. bad team. Yeah. So I was one of the first ones to leave out of that whole core of us <clears throat> that come through. I was one of the first to leave. Um, did you have an agent with you when you spoke to yeah. Pat Rice and Wenger? No. No, did you <coughs> well, went on your own, but, yeah. did, but, you, but you did but have an agent. agent. Yeah. So, so how's the first kind of agent? Like, how do you get an agent? Yeah, so mm. I was, again, a late developer on the agent scene, but I think it was just probably because the way that I played, again, that team that I was in, Jerome Thomas, uh, Jermaine Pennant, Jay Boffroyds, all these sort of easy, please on the eye mm. players. They was getting agents before me, so I was one of the, the, the last ones. Uh, and I was with him the whole way through my career. Eric Waters. Do you remember Eric Waters? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was, uh, I had him when I was like 14. I was about 15 I was. It was just before I signed um, YTS forms at Arsenal. And I had him all the way through till I near enough finished. Yeah, I was the same. And, he, and he ended up, and in the end, he, he was like, it was like one of my mates. It wasn't a business transaction mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was always, I knew everything that he'd done was for the best but how do you choose that first agent, boys? Like, is it... It's tough. Because it, I assume there must be a few agents that mm. are obviously on the lookout for people that are rising through the ranks and you're playing for prominent enough teams that you get signed up. Do they sell you the world? Did, yeah. they, did they go... I guess with you boys, it kind of mm. came true with what yeah. they said, but... My, my, my one was... Bought me, he bought me with a, a box of Adidas gear. Um, <laughs> did he? Yeah, I remember him coming around the house and he brought like the new Preds and like trackies and t-shirts and he'd obviously gone, I've got a player here that, you know, just give us the the, you know, the the standard box that we give to everyone. But I couldn't believe it. I was like, moulds and studs. Mm. Like, they're like 100 quid. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was thinking about how much I've probably earned him now. It's a hell of an investment, oh, wow. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man. Because... Because obviously I had, I had quite a few moves, you know, and, and I was with him all the way through. Um, but yeah, my, my agency was stellar. It was Jonathan Barnett and David Manassi at the time, obviously, but they're, you know, gone on to, to do multi million pound deals, you know, with Jack Grealish, Gareth Bales, yeah. Real Madrid. You know, they're, they're, they're a huge agency. Back then, it was Ledley King that introduced me to them. So when they come and spoke to you, who did they have that was, oh, well, we've, we've got. X, Y, and Z. Yeah, Is there yeah, any so superstars right. there that they So we had. were only, we must have only been about 14, 15. Yeah. Um, but Ledley had had an agent and he was like sponsored by Adidas and, you know, he was getting like bigger thing. He was just on the path to be yeah. a top player. I wasn't quite on that path. So I was like, no one would approach me to be, to be my agent. But then um, obviously they did. And I felt obviously very important. They came around and met my mum and dad. They were very very good with them mm. and they were like well you know it is a good thing there's no you know there's no there's no reason like, I'm not paying them a wage or anything it's only if I do well that they're going to earn money mm. so I thought it might be good to have um, but yeah they, they they represented at that time Kieran Dyer Ashley Cole um, Ledley King uh, Paolo Valazza you, oh, you know, so the, all um, the new sort of that day it was a cream that was kind just of the ones who were just coming in, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, they, they'd they started in cricket, I think, was the first thing they got into. But then realised very quickly that obviously football was where, where it was happening. Mm. Have you um, ever asked them, what, why you? Like, at that point, why did they go for you? Ledley, Ledley um, oh, really? told them about me, yeah. So so what they do, which is really clever, is, um, you know, they'll have someone on their books and they go, "Who's? is there anyone mm. underneath you? Yeah. And players know players, right? Mm. So, and if I'm being honest, I, you know, I don't think they're the, the most knowledgeable about football, but they are very knowledgeable about the business side of football. Um, but what what they what they do do is is trust a player's opinion. You know, if I say like, "There's this kid two years down," and I'm 16, two years down, the kid's 14. It's like, well, has, he, has he got an agent? No put me in front of him. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's like Ledley trusted. They trusted Ledley with me. Um, you know. 
previous to that, I'm sure they would have trusted Kieran Dyer yeah. with 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 getting led lead. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. And it just passed down like that. And you know, once you've got and also those players, you know, like they would have looked like I kind of although Ledley was in my age group, I was like, well, whatever Ledley's doing, you know what I mean? I'll I'll do, you know. So if someone passes it down to you, like if I'm playing in the first team and there's a young lad and I go to him, I've got a great agent, you kind of trust them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I want to get to where he is and if he's helped you get there, then maybe you can help me get there. And it's kind of like a knock-on effect. Did you have a similar thing then? No, my first agent, uh, well, my only agent throughout, Eric, he was a black, he was a black taxi driver at the time. But was it met him was... hitchhiking or something? <laughs> 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 Picked him up one day. <laughs> I'd rather you said that than fake taxi. Uh, no, he yeah, he was no, he was an agent on the he was he was dual roles. He was an agent, but he was also a black cabbie. And then when he become further up the ladder with an agency, he 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 been the. Uh, the, the, the black taxi so um, it was kind of a way that he couldn't go to me this is who I represent this is who we've got he was with a company mm. um, so and then yeah we he, he ended up going up to base who are now CAA that's right. the, they've all joined and um, yeah he's brilliant mm. the hard thing with agencies is obviously you don't you don't trust them I, I was lucky that I had my dad as well do you know what I mean like and I felt mm. like I trust him wholeheartedly and he he was better at making business decisions than me so I had an agent and then my dad was questioning the agent well I bet he was very but, suspicious of anyone from that exactly. point because he was very yeah. and he's very business minded he switched on right my dad yeah but like lots of kids out there don't have that and can get burnt you know what I mean I was lucky that I had someone kind of in between for me um, but you know I can see I can see how that goes wrong but the best thing for with, with with my agency was, was although you know when you when it's all going well it is very easy to be an agent it's like you know if you've got your pick of clubs which one is the best but um, you know for me it was like the, the, the kind of structure that went with them mm. it was like you know there was there was financial advisors there was accountants mm. there was um, you know people that book holidays for you there's people that book cars for you there's people that if you want to go to a bar you can get in do you know what I mean like it's kind of like your whole life was kind of then put in there in their hands. Well, especially mm. at that age as well. Because I imagine a lot of that stuff in terms of how to organise your money and that comes with age and, and learning and experience. They don't really teach you it at the school, which no, I always find no, baffling. I find it looking madness. Back. Unless it's changed now, but learning about a mortgage or learning about well, I don't, well, you know, be a investing on money stuff. or less in it. Yeah, it you would know, be helpful. You know, like, yeah, you know, how to fill in a tax return, <laughs> yeah, how yeah. to buy a house, <laughs> yeah. you know, how to insure your car, yeah. how to pay do bills, life insurance, set up direct pay debits, bills, set up direct yeah, what, debits. What you pay bills yeah, yeah. for. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, yeah. totally I, know, I know Pythagoras theorem. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I know that. But you're right yeah. on the on the agency one. You know where they go, or the, yeah. So especially for the youngsters, they go, well, look, this is the whole team that we've got. We've got accountants, financial advisors. We'll have these, the lifestyle. It does help. Right, yeah. But then as a youngster, you go, okay, it's brilliant. So but it all goes around in circle. So when you obviously you sign up as a youngster, you go, yeah, can you uh, book us a table at Sugar Reef? Or <laughs> can you book us the Titanic yeah. Bar and all them ones? You don't even go to the other ones. Yeah. Really. They, they're doing that in the background for you, like looking after your money. Then when you start becoming older and wiser, then it's a case of, right, that sort of section goes and it's a case of, right, can you put my money from here to there? You know, instead of booking holiday to Iron Apple, you're going, can you do one for the family to Disney? It so, goes... what was, what, so, so, your 18th, so for your 18th, you were at Arsenal? Yeah. So what did you do for your 18th? Birthday. Yeah. Do you remember? I imagine being 18 years old and playing for Arsenal. Fucking hell. <laughs> no. It's awesome, isn't it? I can't, I can't remember what I've done for my 18. I don't remember. I, don't 20, know I, mean, I remember 21st. What was your 18? I drank champagne for the first time. Give it Charlie Bananas and went to fucking <laughs> Café de Paris. Cafe Did de Paris, was it? Cafe de Paris. I, I, I imagine that was the place. My 18th. Go yeah, on. Yeah. My agent had a... David had, I think it was his uncle that run it, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, I remember, I always remember it was kind of my first venture into like this mad world of, I remember sitting there and I, I remember seeing Marcel Desailly and thinking, oh my God, it's Marcel Desailly over there. I thought I, I've, I've, I've arrived. <laughs> I've cracked it. <laughs> I went, I went, I drank champagne all night because I thought that was what you had to do. And I came home and threw up all over my own bed. <laughs> Oh, that was a terrible idea. Mm. That does seem peak football of that. Mm. I remember um, quite a few years ago, I can't have been to similar age, maybe early 20s. 
um, going to Cafe de, uh, de Paris for probably the first and only time. And I walked around the corner on the way to the toilets. One of the booths and Nick Knowles was in there. Nick Knowles was in there. And I thought, I've made it. <laughs> really? How good is it when you walk I've into someone and you see someone famous? It, yeah. a little... oh, it changes everything. I saw since. the whole Arsenal team in Titanic uh, once. And that was like, kind of a like, little haunt for us. It was just, just off, like glass, glass blower street, glass mm. house street. Mm -hmm. is it? Like it's so time, yeah. yeah, I remember Titanic. Then it's changed now. It's something else now. But I remember walking in there and, that, and when I say the whole thing, like on the dance floor, like I was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was on the dance floor. Bear in mind, Seaman Adams, <laughs> Petite, um, <laughs> Parla, and like I, I quit. Just the whole team was was having a boogie. <laughs> <laughs> was that in the hot stuff era as well yeah, like potentially the, like when top, they they when they were top yeah yeah I couldn't believe it I was like well this is obviously the place we need to go every weekend absolutely there, there was no camera phones was there back then as well you could you know you could yeah. let you could go out and just have a relaxing night knowing that nothing's going to come back question for you boys um, sort of first experience around the England setup. I guess first England game, Crouchy. What would that have been? Yeah, my first England game was a strange, like because it was it was an end of season tour to um, America. Yeah, so it was a mad one, and it was actually perfect, I think, because I think if you if you play your first game in a qualifier in England, I just don't know it's quite it's a lot of pressure on it. You know, with that, mm. it felt like quite a few players pulled out. It was kind of like a fresh squad. We were miles out, in, kind of in America, and it was like end of season, so it was like a chance to become an England player before you had. You know so what you, I mean? So you get the so, call up, and then uh, uh, let's go from right at the beginning of this. Let's go for the basics. Is this first experience getting on a plane with the England team? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like that's got to be mad. Is that private? Is is that private to go to America as well? Or do you all? Just a stupid I, question. I, I'm this, trying maybe. to think. I don't think anyone. I can't remember anyone on it. Yeah, you got, must have had your own plane. I think there was people on it, but I think we got it on late yeah. and went straight into like our own area. Do you know what I mean? They sectioned off a bit. Yeah, of the plane. and then oh. and then we, when we got off, I think we might have got off first. Yeah, yeah. and onto a bus. Yeah, so like we didn't see anyone, yeah. but we were on with people. Yeah, and I don't even know if they knew that they, they were. So on. you're all in the England get up and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, we were on. Yeah, and so then, you look to your left and right. Who's who's who's? Yeah, in the well, plane? Like, I mean, on that, I mean, the the, the big hitters on that Rio. one was uh, the big hitters on that one. Was obviously, Beckham was on it, and uh, Michael Owen. Um, I don't think Stevie came. Might have been, might have been Lampard there because I don't think Rooney came. So you had um, Lamb, Skulls, Sol Campbell, Skulls wasn't there. But yeah, you know, so, I mean, so so a lot of these players weren't coming to that. Well, one, it was, so it was there was a, a few that kind of like, you know, were, were, were in for for like their first time. You know, yeah. I remember Andrew Johnson being there, Keir Richardson who'd scored of exact night. There was a few like yeah. Luke Young, me, you know, Andrew Johnson. There was a few like kind of rogue see how they get on kind yeah. of thing. And I remember playing. And I was gutted because I remember missing the first game against um, USA in Chicago. Uh, I remember missing it because I got injured in training the day before. But when I say injured, it was just a rolled ankle, but it swelled up massively. Mm. And I thought, I'm all right, I'm all right. I couldn't get my boot on. Yeah. I couldn't even get my boot on. I thought, I'm, I'm going to be a one-cat wonder. Was that your fault? No, I, I think or I just... bad tackle? I, I can't or... remember. I, I think it might have been like Matthew Upson, I think. And he uh, kind of like stood on my ankle and it just went under and it just swelled up a bit. And I thought I was gutted to like, to kind of... Because I, I thought I'll just get my two caps and then I'll retire. Mm. Oh, God, that'd be great. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> wow. This is my mentality. I was thinking... But you often describe things almost as a bit of deal or no deal in that it's like, obviously, you... You're just constantly achieving dreams, aren't you? So yeah, you just, just go rolling I'll, on. I'll yeah. accept that one England game. Don't give me any more. That's fine. Then well, you have an like, England my game. My mum and dad it's... came out. Um, you know, Sarah, my sister. We all went like, come out watch these two games because mm. this is never going to happen again. <laughs> Do you know, like, that, that was my mentality. I was like, obviously, I'll try. I mean, yeah. but I was like, you know, fucking hell. There's a lot, you know, not fucking top players out there. So yeah, that was my mentality really. So you must have been know, so upset when you... I injured for the first game and then I thought, fucking hell, but thankfully, God, I started the next one. It was me and Michael Owen up front. Columbia in the Giants Stadium, believe it or not. Oh, quite aptly. The How New York Giants Stadium. Do you remember who you were rooming with? No, we had rooms on our own. Oh, did you? Yeah, no, an amazing hotel. I think we were in like the... We were in... Uh, oh, what was it, Ken? It was like a... 
I want to say like a four seasons or it was just off Fifth Avenue anyway yeah. in New York and I remember being in there and obviously my mum and dad were incredibly excited so they, they were in my hotel like every day <laughs> like <laughs> looking around obviously like Bex I, like people I mean like all these superstars walking around um, they were trying to hold it together and then obviously I played and I remember playing my, me and Michael Owen kicked it off quite well Michael got a hat trick I remember taking a quick free kick and putting him in um, for like the second or third one and I knew I'd had a good game and stuff but and like Sven seemed, seemed happy mm. and then um, obviously because it was end of season it was a bit more relaxed so like everyone was flying back but I used to take my mates away to America every every summer and uh, <laughs> and I said well, would I just am I alright to stay out? And they were they were like, yeah, there's a couple staying out anyway. And I didn't realise who it was. And then um, I was staying out, and then I was flying the next day to go and meet my mates. But I think we we're going to Vegas, and uh, my mates were obviously buzzing for it. They they flew out already. Had they been there for the game? Uh, no, no, no. They didn't come to so the they game. They were just there for they, the party. They flew out for after the because it was Amazing. the end of the season. So like we yeah. were going to have a good crack. I used to take my weights away for 15 days in America every year. We used to do five days somewhere, five days somewhere else, five days in Vegas. How good is that? We did it for five, <laughs> five years on the spin. <laughs> the crouch claim. Imagine. Yeah. Well, great. If you seen us, like in between Mickey, us. <laughs> Mickey Rourke. Features in one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had some t the times of our life. You know what I mean? Yeah. My mates from school. Yeah. Still my mates now. Yeah. Um, but you know, we do, we do, we we were doing well. Well, I say we. <laughs> like <we're Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing all right, and I just used to yeah, I just used to take them all out, and we used to have we used to have the best time. But that was this particular time where is it? Yeah, and I remember I remember David Beckham say, uh, State was out there. He took us out. So he was one of the people. He was one of the ones that stayed. It was the weirdest school ever. So, was... hang on, so you'd gone from Chicago, yeah, out to, to Vegas, New York. Oh, to New York first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we were flying from New York, and I was going straight to Vegas. But they were going elsewhere. I think Bex was staying in New York. Oh, okay. Um, so, this... so you're in New York with Bex at this point? Yes, yeah, so, but like, this school's mad. It was me. Beckham, Rob Green, uh, Andrew Johnson, and Sol Campbell. God. It's the weirdest <laughs> vibe. It's the weirdest vibe. It's I mean, that, the... that is a footballing in between us. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's like just, a sort of weird, so much going on there. weird collection. Of... Bex was buzzing. No, he's yeah, looking like, around. He's going to the fucking like group you know, here. Kind of, where are we going, David? <laughs> <laughs> are you taking us? Yeah, so at this point, he's got run of the place, well, right? This fucked. is. I mean, I mean he he's fucked because he's got to take us now. He's gutted. But yeah, we had a great night. Blanket fucking Babylon, it was called, we went to. And Blanket then, Babylon? Yeah, I think this one in Notting Hill. Mm. Oh, bu no, Bungalow 8. Just pulled it out of the bag. Bungalow 8, Bungalow yeah. 8. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just pulled Bungalow it out. 8. That's where we went. Bungalow 8, New York. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We went there. We had a lot, we had a, we had a, we had a lot of fun. So, so hang on, but you're the England team out in that. So if you've got... As Bex said, don't worry about tonight, I'll sort it. Well, I don't remember paying for much, I'll be honest. So just, but you just follow behind him, right? Well, like, yeah, exactly what I was doing. You just orbit around him. I can yeah, tell. Yeah. I was just, wait, wait, <laughs> just, I was just hanging around, waiting for knockdowns. What are you looking for here? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just researching Bungalow 8. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just, we had a good time, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I missed my flight the next day. And then, um, yeah, they're like buses, though, those internal ones. Mm. New York to Vegas was pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Could I just, you, I just you, turned up and went, I've missed my flight, then I'll get the next one. You didn't want to persuade Bex to come with you to Vegas. That'd, um, be, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I that would be it, great. Might be what, busy. Um, what did he say? I was down at the Hamptons. <laughs> you lot crack on. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't strong it, mate. I've took you out once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First goal. Can you remember your first goal? Professional yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I've, we've talked about this before, I think, because uh, I remember it like clear as day. We've talked about this on the pod. Obviously, I'll be interested to hear yours, but uh, I'll do mine pretty quick. It was like Gillingham. I remember coming off the bench and uh, we were 2 0 down at Gillingham. And I came off the bench and I remember uh, the corner coming in. And me chesting it and thinking, right, I'm going to volley this because I thought I've, I've practiced, I've, I'm good at volley. I know I'm good at volley. And it bounced and I thought, I'm going to volley this. And I slipped. And I literally, in that moment, heard the crowd groan. Like, oh, man. Like, I can rem remember it now, yeah. clear as day. Because it was, I remember seeing, because people, people used to see me when I used to come on, they'd, they'd look at me and go like, he can't play football, yeah. you know what I mean? And there would always be a misconception of me. So when I came on and then just it and slipped and we're 2-0 down, 
I could hear them. I could visibly hear mm. it in that moment. And then thankfully recovered and vo- hit the volley so sweet in the top corner. Uh, and then I was like off and running then. And that was me. And then I set up the equaliser for Chris Cormier. We drew 2-2. Two, two. Love that. And um, and that was me kind of like, I was just... And that was away at Jill's? No, it was at home, at Loftus home. Road. Oh. And that was, uh, that was when I just knew that it was like, I'm a professional footballer now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how, how much it felt. What about you? It's a big milestone, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Huge. So mine, I was on loan at Brentford that season from Arsenal. And it was at home to Blackpool. And again, it was a volley. So it was a free kick. We had we got a free kick just inside their half on the right hand side near the touchline, and it was just pumped in. Typical League One, pumped in. I was on the edge of the box. He got headed out, headed out. Yeah. and I literally had a touch. It just bounced and half volley. And as soon as it left my foot, and it was one of the ones where I think I've seen this goal. Didn't yeah. even mean to hit it. Oh, it I've just went it. like an arrow straight in the in the uh, far corner. It was nil nil, and that was to make it one nil. Wow. How did, how did you celebrate, Sid? Oh, you know out? what? Surely I the can't. Finger. I think everyone just jumped on me because it's one of them ones where when a youngster scores yeah, in the team, everyone's happy. Everyone's absolutely buzzing for you. Yeah. Um, and everyone just jumped on me. And Lloyd Awusu scored the second and we won 2 0. But I was lucky in that respect because when I was at Brentford, we was at the top of the table. We were chasing mm. for promotion. So we weren't struggling. It was, and it was at home. It was a good vibe. It was a good environment. Um, and we went out after. We went out after the boys. I was like buzzing, buzzing. <laughs> Do you think the tag of having that, so that was your debut? No, that's my first goal. Oh, your first goal. That tag yeah. of scoring a really good first goal was a first yeah, goal. A, like, it was a worldy goal. It's Try, helpful in just the PR now. of you as a player, isn't it? Yeah. You say you can't find it. It was on uh, like, because back then, do you remember the lower leagues was on ITV? Uh, oh, was... mate, we can get shit done on this. Yeah. Trust. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember someone found your goal? Like a really old... Was an old like milk cup goal oh, or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somehow yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. Under sixteens. Yeah. Well, I, I was. I would have been fourteen or fourteen. I think. Yeah. No, fifteen. What what goal is it? Sids. Brentford uh, versus Blackpool. At it would have been two thousand and one. Two thousand and one. If anyone's got footage of that, it might even be someone who, who potentially was there that managed to get a sneaky little video. Never know. Mm. Well, you know what? Like, there's, there's, there's loads there, you know, but we've there's loads of first ones we haven't done there. We'd like, you know, I was thinking first injuries, first punditry, first podcast, first that Peter Crouch podcast. First first podcast, first... Um, there's so many firsts that actually I think we could do this on another episode yeah. as well. Right, well, lads. So, uh, yeah, we got a little bit carried away there. We forgot that we asked uh, Jermaine Defoe whether he'd run 7 million. Um, so he has... There is a voice note. And oh. we haven't heard this. I've, I've no idea. Are no. the rumours true? Did Jermaine Defoe this is win £7 million pounds on the national lottery? Well, <laughs> yes, Crouch Dog. Mate, you know how much people have said that to me? Like, that was the rumour back in the day. I've had once fucking £7 million. No. I wish I did. Nah, I didn't win it, mate. I didn't win it. <laughs> oh, I think that's confirmed. I think he's he didn't win it. seven million. He said, "You know, only people have asked him if he's won seven million." <laughs> well, it's good to put that to bed, then, isn't it? Or, you know, if you did win seven million, isn't that exactly what you would say if you wanted to? Keep yeah, well, it? that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It looks um, unlikely, but I'd love to know how that rumor began. Yeah, we yeah. should investigate more rumors. You know, because we can. Yeah, get no, this definitely, stuff sorted. definitely. Um, Wayne Bridge on Gladiators. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have what, you got somewhere reply? with that as well? Another reply. Oh, great. If Wayne Bridge is up for it, he's in the mix. But we have had so many celebrities contact us saying they want to be involved in celebrity gladiators. So many of them. But if uh, he wants to put his name at the top of the pile, yeah. let's see if he's fit enough. Let's see if he's strong enough. Let's see if he can take on those gladiators. Yeah, I love that. By the way, this is not a confirmed booking. <laughs> Read the small print of this voice. <laughs> not confirmed. I don't know. So, that sounds good. Well, well he is confirmed. fit enough, so... He is fit enough. Yeah. We'll see. This well, listen, is... if, you, if you see Wayne Bridge on Gladiators, you know how it all started. Yeah. And that's a massive pass in the pod. I'd rather one of, our, you know, someone under our umbrella went into Gladiators. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if he's on there, he'd he have to wear the... Yeah, you know, the other pass on the pod sticker or, you know, the pod sticker or something. Yeah, there'll back. be something on there. Yeah. Love it. I'm sure he would. Boys, last couple of podcasts, we've been talking about the sleep app oh, that Lord. you can get records it's in your sleep. Big. 
you boys hadn't seen this before, I no. don't think, and now we're obsessed with it, rightly so. Lots of people are recording themselves in their sleep and then sending them in to us. What's nice, if you download the, the Sleep Talk app, and there's a few of them about, is you can save the audio from it and then just literally forward it on on email to Brilliant. us if it captures anything in the night. So it records you in the night, you go through it the next day, and it only shows you bits where it's recorded. It's like one of those motion capture yeah. kind of things. Yeah, absolutely awesome. I think personal highlights were uh, Fart Wake's dog uh, and Oh Andy. <laughs> oh, uh, so oh, oh Andy. Oh Andy. <laughs> You've shut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we said that we were going to record ourselves. I've got to be honest, I've been a bit lax on this. Well, I have as well. well but I've it. done it. I've done it. Uh, it's been a bit boring. There's one, the, the car alarm, go, my, my son's car alarm goes off. Um, it kind of tells a story, but it's not great. Do you know what well, you want? I know it feels a bit odd. You, you want to record on the nights where you've got a bit of, you're a bit ill like the fever dreams, yeah. that kind of thing where drink, it gets a bit maybe? wild. Or you've had a drink, or you've eaten a lot of cheese. Mm, yeah, oh, yeah. Just the you dreams, know, yeah. Right. Well, to say that, I woke up last night and my son, I had one of my boys go like, ah, ah, ah. And I was like, first thing I had done when I opened my eyes, I was like, fuck, I didn't put the app on. <laughs> so not you're worried about him. Not really worried. Put the safety of the house or him. It was like, I didn't put the app on those <laughs> devos. Well, we got um, um, people are sending them in to us. Great. Uh, we got one I was from hoping they would. We got one from Alex here. I've not actually heard this yet. Uh, it's been forwarded to me. Shall I play it? Please do. Uh, Ian Rush. Yeah. It was Rush in the end. Ian Rush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rush in. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Ian Rush. Did you say Ian Rush in the end or just Ian Rush? I think he said Ian Rush. Ian Rush in the end. And he was like, Rush in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Ian Rush, he's, just, he's obviously like scoring a winner. The amount of dreams I've had where I've scored the winner, like, mm. when I was a kid, I was, I was all I dreamt about that. So I've, oh, I've scored the winner. Like, he's probably going like Ian Rush. Ian Rush has. Probably, Ian Rush has scored the winner. All right. Uh, I've got a message here from, uh, from Carl. Uh, it's with a C, so he's, he's okay. Uh, he says, uh, following you saying you're going for a Pascal to get a Heskey, which of course, if you weren't listening last week, was a Pascal Chimbonda to get an Emil, um, a Wanda and a Emil. Um, I thought I'd send over some rhyming football slang. If you're going to the bar, you're going to the Denver. Mm. Quite like that oh, one. That's good. That I, one. First bar, one. That's yeah. good. So, that's good. I, I, I do like that one. One of you boys pulls a worldie. They've... they've uh, he did a Jason, but that, you know, that's Jason punching. It's standard yeah. language. That's pretty standard. Any time I've put up a picture of, I avoid it actually now. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm, it's like moths to the flame yeah. when I say this sort of thing. It's not going to help the cause. Mm. But I'm, I'm in a, a tricky situation where occasionally my missus will say, you don't really post about me on Instagram. She doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. But date nights or anniversary, something like that. Mm. She sees everyone else put up these, you know, sort of very wet posts, you know, mm. about. And occasionally I pop a picture of my missus and just underneath it's just Jason, 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 Jason. <laughs> it's so offensive to I, me. I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> so what does what does the missus think when she sees that she must she, 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 she must loves I reckon it. she secretly she must love it she, she must do it. oh that she must yeah, does do she know J Jason who's this lad Jason no which because the phrase punching she yeah, knows pretty, so he, she would say punching like yeah. and then sometimes people just put up the the glove the glove emoji yeah, yeah, yeah. that goes around yeah I'll get that yeah. one fuck's sake man yeah why can't it be slightly more uh, like well done like what, why, it what, who's, what, what about why isn't everyone putting Richard underneath it you know <laughs> Richard Richard yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> what would you prefer Richard or, Jay, or Jason well, I just don't know why it's got to be at my prefer, expense you know mm, like oh you're Richard's. punching rather than well done I, I just think I, feel, I take it as a compliment like it's uh, you know, oh, you've got to take it as a compliment. Well, you know, well, you what, have to take it as a compliment, otherwise you just burst into tears, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, imagine if it was the other way around. If it, yeah, but it's not, is it? What I'm saying yeah, is, it's like if it was though, that'd be well, embarrassing. Imagine if you put one on and it, it didn't go down well. well imagine like, you put it on and it, and it was like the other way. Yeah. 
you know what, what I mean? the cheese punching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's but it's not. This is what I'm saying. Like but yeah, but that, I, I just think, think everyone worse. on social media could be a bit more of a team player. Do you, do you know what I mean? Because she obviously sees the comments, and rather than Jason punching, yeah, but it gives her a spring and a step, doesn't it? Or do you sure. think she thinks well, no, so? Yeah, maybe I they're right. Is, it's like a fucking troll. <laughs> like. <laughs> Wow. Do you know what I sometimes see on what social media? I see I've like heard that in you. Um, <laughs> I'll see a comment say under a Laura Woods post, and then and then someone will reply underneath going to that guy will be like, "Cheers for lending us your Ferrari this weekend, mate." You know what I mean? To try and make the other person seem right, like more attractive, yeah. I guess. What I'm saying is, I think everyone could help me out a little bit more. I think the punching thing. Right. Do you know what harsh, I mean? Much. Oh, it's not. I, mean, I get it. Is I get what I get. What's been said, but it would be really helpful just to kind of just go, um, you right. know, put, put, throw some because she's seeing the comments, isn't she? Right, right. So yeah, just go like, oh, you want us to? Like, I want kind punching of, the other way yeah, around. Okay, a bit. okay. Like, so like, if you just, post of one of your misses, just say something like, uh, "Qua, she's done well." Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. That's that's what I need. Or oh, lucky girl. A couple of girls go. Lucky just, girl. Just for one just post. A couple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just to level it out a bit, and I'm yeah, sure you'd that, like the same. Yeah, no, makes sense. Yeah, just a couple of girls. Just chip in and go like, "Quite handsome." Yeah, that's what I mean. Handsome. <laughs> Handsome's a great one. Yeah, Handsome's a great one. I think cool. it's just. I think it's what just. What dudes with that? We just got. <laughs> we just got to level out some of this. I've like, gone too far there. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not that. I don't think it needs to go that far. I, I just think it just needs to be a subtle <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah, endorsement okay. all right, all right. of me, rather than it just being totally like. It's almost like a thousand people messaging her, going, "What the fuck are you thinking?" <laughs> <laughs> and it would be really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> to help me out a bit more. That. Okay. All right. Well, listen, on this podcast, right, if you are listening, if Chris does post a, a, a picture of him and his business, mm. just, just for one post, the next one you see... Don't go too far with it. Don't, no, go, don't, don't insult. No, don't no, go right, stupid. Don't be the team you know, player. Just be, a, be team player. a team player and say, core, she's done well. So, yeah, uh, she's, something along those lines. She's done well, yeah. you know. Um, you know, what a great guy he is. Just something, you know, you know uh, be creative about yeah, it. Along but, those lines. All right. Mm. Uh, okay, we're getting towards the end of the podcast. I warn you now, the next thing we're going to play you is relatively long, but I hope it's going to be worth it. Okay. Do you remember we floated the idea with Neil Warnock when he was on about Warnock the musical? Yeah. yeah. And what we're kind of imagining is make. I don't really... He, I think it came from the fact the night before he came to be on the podcast, he uh, took his uh, wife to go see Jersey Boys and it turns out he's a big fan of musical theatre. So we float the idea of Neil Warnock, the musical, if, if someone listening to this was willing to help us make it, perhaps what we could do is look to get it performed at the Edinburgh Fringe in a tiny little venue. Like, we're not talking Wembley Arena, Crouch. I'm talking about, like, get a really small venue, 10 person, 10, 20 person, if that's the audience amount that we think will come to this. But wouldn't it be amazing to have Neil Warnock, the musical? Sounds, it sounds, sounds fantastic, yeah. Sounds and as always, well... As always, our listeners have stepped up here and have um, started to get the ball rolling on this from a kind of creativity point of view, Sid. <laughs> and um, we got a message here from Tony who's mocked up what uh, a song could be for War Not the Musical and has sent it to us. Okay. Not heard it yet, um, but I'm looking at the voice note here and it's it's quite lengthy. Let's go. So I'm going to play it. We might play you the best bit in the mm -hmm. podcast, um, which will be the bit you hear. Um, but if not, let's just play the whole thing. And, and it'd be interesting to get everyone's thoughts. I think the great thing about this is it's just getting the ball rolling and what I think could be amazing further down the year. Okay. Sorry, it's to the tune of um, This Is Me. Uh, right, okay. okay, great. A stranger to the game Colin, they say But Neil Warnock is my name you Gotta learn to enjoy every win But Peter C, they have to say You gotta do with discipline I won't let them bring me down to dust I know that there's a league for us for we are victorious Kevin Musk is gonna bring you down If you pass to Adele, it'll be 50 pounds 
It's not chess, it's revenge. Are you with me? This is Neil. Fuck off, Pinocchio. With the blades, we blurs and white some more. My market is easy. Are you with me? This is Neil. <laughs> That is world class. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is world class. In that in this entirety, aren't we? <laughs> okay, so that's what we've decided to do. That's the first Whoa. verse and chorus of what's been wow. called This Is Neil. There is actually another verse um, which we might play you on the next podcast. Oh, my God, please. Well, uh, who was his name? Him? That's Tony. Tony, that Tony that is incredible. Tony. Tony, send us in uh, the next verse for the next episode, please, because that, that that's phenomenal. Mm. Yeah.